Well, good morning and welcome to Bloomer Baptist Church. We are happy to be able to worship with you this morning. Praise God for the freedoms we have in this country to worship today without fear of arrest, fear of persecution, fear of death. But we must pray for our missionaries around the world, pray for those stuck in their homes, pray for those serving this country and serving God wherever they may be. Let's open in prayer now. Lord, we thank you for this great blessing it is to come before you both to come before you in prayer and to come before you in worship. Lord, the great blessing it is to lift our voices high, the great blessing it is to lift our minds high as we study your word. Lord, we pray to, we just ask you to help focus our minds on you this morning. May we glorify you in all we do. May the saints, the believers, those set apart for holy living by Jesus Christ, followers of you, may we Be edified, ever growing in the knowledge of you. And Lord, may we also grow in obedience to you. And Lord, may the lost be found. Lord, we pray for those who are not able to be with us this morning. We pray for them to be able to worship with us. We pray for them to be able to worship you, to study your word wherever they are. And Lord, we pray for blessings upon them and us as we study your word now. Amen. We have just a couple more weeks in Proverbs And as we work to wrap up this series in Wisdom for Living, I felt we should look to God's wisdom regarding family, family time, having a wise and happy home. It's kind of a scary topic to preach on, really, because as you preach on these things, I feel Satan tries to pull you down or God tries to challenge you. And I did feel challenged this week. The main idea today is this. The Proverbs show us, let me pull that up for you. The Proverbs show us how to have a wise and happy home. Reading and giving time to understand these Proverbs betters our family time. Do you want to better your family time? Do you want to have a wise and happy home? Well, let's look to the Proverbs. Let's look to God's Word. Let's see what they have to say. You see, God's instructions and plans for the family is for it to function with being built upon wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4 says this, By wisdom... A house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now, some translations actually end a little bit differently. They say, by wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant treasures. I kind of like that word treasures a little bit better than riches, but let's move on. You see, Everyone has a family, young and old, married and single, male and female. Everyone has a family, has had a family. Everybody has somebody that is special to them. Everybody is involved in some kind of family. So the book of Proverbs speaks to every one of us. This study today, this message today, this sermon today is for every one of us. How does God help us to live wisely, even happily, in our very own relationships, in relationships in general, too, not just family? Because admittedly, today speaks a lot to the parents raising children, but if this is not you, you could apply a lot of these same principles in more of a general sense to the church family or to people around you. How can we have a wise and happy family? How do we better our family time, our people time? I think we as parents want to give our children everything. We seek to give them the world, but in doing so, we often give them the wrong things, or at least they miss out on the most important things as we don't have our priorities straight. How do we have wise and happy families then? Well, I'm going to give you the points right off the bat here for your notes. Number one, we need to give your children yourself. Again, if you don't have kids right now, maybe they've grown up, they're grown up, maybe God never blessed you in that way, but they've blessed you in other ways. Well, you can apply this in more of a general sense. Give people yourself. Number two, give your children a Jesus-following parent or give people a Jesus-follower to look to. Number three, give your children proper training in wisdom or Give those around you proper training in wisdom. Again, please just try to make that translation to your own life however it is best fit. But number one, 
give your children yourself. This means to give your children yourself more than money, more than other people, more than jobs, more than hobbies. We have an obligation and a responsibility to give your children you, to give our children ourselves, to give people yourself. So often we want to throw other things in front of them, whether it be TV or tablets or phone or games or sports or hobbies. And all of these things can be very good. But so often we're throwing money at our children instead of ourselves. Now, I know they need money. I know we need money to live on, but they also need us. As adults, we have many things which demand our time, but we must have our priorities in order. And the proper priorities or the proper priority order should be this. I did not put it up on the screen, but it is this. Number one, God. You need to have God as number one in your life. No matter who you are, God needs to be number one. You need to seek after him. You need to follow him. You need to submit to him. Number two. Three, uh, number two, so God is number one. Number three is spouse. Number three is family. So God is at the top. Think of an umbrella, God, spouse, family, then yourself. Now, this might confuse some people because some people think, well, if I don't take care of myself, how can I take care of others? And that's, yes, that is true in a general sense, but too often we want to put all of our hobbies, all of our wants, all of our selfish desires before our spouse, before our family, before God, and that's when our lives get totally messed up. God, spouse, family, yourself, and then others and your job. Now, I understand the lines get grayed a bit over time, and sometimes this is hard. I mean, how do you put your job last? You need to make money, provide for them. So yes, I understand there's a lot of translation, a lot of deciphering to be done here, but we still need to keep that order in action in our lives. Another way to put this list would be this. I found this from a a college professor, and it says, people before things, home life before work life. Spouse before children, children before friends, spouse before house, spouse before self, spiritual before material. You can email me later and I'll give you that that list. I'll send you my notes. But your priorities will either encourage or discourage a wise and happy home. So what priorities are you placing upon your life, upon your family? upon your children, upon yourself. What do they see you giving them? Do they see you just providing for them in a financial or monetary stance? And and in case, that's great. But do they see you giving them yourself? Unfortunately, too many families do not have right and God-honoring priorities, or at least they're in the wrong order. This may largely be to worldly perspectives on what the world says is most important. And them saying, you must provide all of these things for your family, and you can't provide all of these things without working 90 hours a week, without constantly working from home, without delegating, designating every waking moment to work. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4 says this, A house is built by wisdom. And it is established by understanding. This is another translation. A house is built by wisdom. And it is established by understanding. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with every precious and beautiful treasure. What we see first here is that the means to building a home is not upon treasures. That is a byproduct. That's something you get by building it upon wisdom. And every builder that's building a home needs to have a plan. They need to have blueprints. Here, our plan is based upon wisdom. Wisdom is the path to having a wise, happy, loving, wonderful, beautiful family. We need to look to the word of God for wise living. It says that wisdom is a path to a happy home. We must live and parent wisely. Repeatedly, Proverbs says that God actively blesses wise families with happiness. Chapter 10 Chapter 17, 23, 24, 28, 29, and even here in the second part of chapter 24, verse 4, where it says, By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wisdom, Wisdom 
is the path to be wealthy and blessed, but not necessarily in a financial sense. That's not what matters most. It's not the money. Pastor Tony Evans once said, when you build your house and family upon God's wisdom, your home will be filled with beautiful treasure regardless of your income. Such a family is prepared to extend God's kingdom rule into the world. Your life, your home, your families will be blessed in many ways when you seek wisdom and understanding of God and follow his instructions, but not necessarily financially. Again, that's not what matters. Spiritually, you will be blessed. You'll be blessed by one another. You'll be blessed by each other. Back to our first point. Our families need us before money. Money is good. Money is needed. But be careful that the seeking of worldly wealth and treasures does not cause you to lose your family and the value they bring to your life. Proverbs speaks of money being a good thing, but not at any price. Proverbs also tells us in 1516 that it is better to have little wealth and great fear and understanding of the Lord than great wealth and little fear of God. Oh, to live in a world where we would spend more time and energy loving our families than making money for them. And one extra thing here, parents should be in a joint effort to raise their children. Families need all hands on deck. Done are the days of thinking one spouse makes the money and the other spouse takes care of the children in the home. Both spouses are in this together and share in the responsibilities. Both parents should be giving themselves and their time to their children and families. Our children need our fathers in the home, active in their lives. Our children need the mothers as well. We need more family time. Too many families are broken. Too many divorces happen. And I believe this is due to overworking individuals or parents who are not there for one another or for their children. Once they are there physically, they are not there emotionally or consciously or to lead spiritually. Think about your own lives. How often are you there physically in somebody's life, but you're not really there consciously, emotionally? How often are you praying to God or studying God's word, but you're not really there, you're just going through the actions? We need to provide for our families in more than just a financial sense. Quality family time should involve such things as these, family worship. Our families need to see us worshiping God together. We need to lead our families spiritually. Church time together is important. Devotions together at home. Prayer together at home. How often do we do these things at church but not at home? Family meals, discussions, games and activities, family trips and events, all of these are great quality family time. Playing in the yard, throwing the ball with your son or your daughter or kicking the soccer ball or maybe just spending some time laying in a hammock with your family, going to their concerts, their games, their track meets. All of these things are quality family time that too many families are missing out on today because they're too busy. I often judge myself harshly here as I think to how many times as a kid I thought, I just wish my dad had more time for me. And now I think about myself as a dad and how I get so busy with stuff that so often I'm not paying attention to my children as I should. Give your children yourself. Number two, next, to have a wise and happy home, we need to give your children parents who are following Jesus. Again, Proverbs 24, 3 says, the means to building and establishing a home is wisdom. Let's dig in more. You see, this makes perfect sense in light of the full context of Proverbs. Solomon is giving words of wisdom to his son, how to live a wise life. And in Proverbs 3 and 8, we see that God created and ordered the world through wisdom. In fact, Proverbs shows us that wisdom is not just a thing. Wisdom is a person, the co-creator, Jesus since God created the world and it works in a certain divine way, we need to pattern our homes after the order by which God created it. To go against God's intended order or operation would just be foolish. And the pattern or natural order to live is centered on a person, centered on wisdom, centered on Jesus. One quote I found says, Knowing Jesus, true wisdom, helps us walk wisely daily. Jesus equals wisdom. Wisdom equals redemption. 
Redemption equals life. Wisdom is a person to know, and once you begin a relationship with him, he makes you wise for life. God built the world through wisdom, and we are, we are to build our home through him and his wisdom as well. We must show our children the life that we have with Jesus. Let our children see us following him. Show them what it means to have life and peace with God. Show them how to have it themselves. You see, the world is full of sin and brokenness, and our lives are full of sin. None, of our right, none are righteous, but we need not and should not allow sin and brokenness to control us. Allow Christ to control your daily living. Seek him and wisdom daily and give your children the gift of a Christ-following parent. This is a wise and happy home. A wise and happy home is filled with Christ followers. A relationship with God through Christ will lead to right relationships with others, including your family. Number three, skipping forward a bit for time, give your children proper training in wisdom. Notice, I didn't just say give them training. Give them proper training in wisdom. We must stay Christ-centered, wisdom-centered, Building your home with this wisdom leads to a wise and happy home. So give them proper training in this wisdom, not just any training, not worldly wisdom training, but proper training, godly wisdom training, biblical wisdom. Proverbs 22.6 says to train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we train our children in three ways. A, by example. B, by instruction. C, by correction. And again, I repeat to you that if you don't have children living at home or if you've never been blessed with children, God's blessed you in other ways, I assure you, or maybe he just hasn't blessed you in that way yet, you can apply these in a general sense. How do you train people around you in proper training and wisdom? You do it by A, example, B, instruction, and C, correction. It starts with example. Your children need to see a saved parent who walks in this wisdom of God. Your children need to see you praying, see you reading scripture, see you attending church, see you singing the songs with a good attitude, listening to the sermons, and dare I say, they need to see you taking notes and paying attention. (laughs) I think to how many times our children see us sleeping or not paying attention, and I'm not just talking about in church, I'm thinking in life. They also should see you serving the Lord in church and outside of church and without grumbling. Philippians 2 and 1 Peter 4 talk about this. In the home, they need to see that you have a hard work ethic, but they also need to see you prioritize your time with God, your spouse, and them. Proverbs 14, 26 6, Proverbs 14, 26 says, In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence, and his children have a refuge. Those who trust the Lord live with great confidence because they are under God's protection from the storms of life. We talked about that last week, about how when we're in the storm, we can remember that Jesus is in the storm with us. Those who trust the Lord live with great confidence because they are under God's protection from storms of life. Your wisdom shields your children because they get to experience the benefits and blessings of it. They should see who protects you. They should see God being your refuge. They should see you trusting in him. Proverbs 20, verse 7 says, A righteous person acts with integrity. His children who come after him will be happy. Let them see this. B, train them in wisdom by instruction. So A was example, B is instruction. We should instruct our children. We instruct our children by using our words to teach them. And wise words of instruction bring up a child in the direction they are to go. So teach your children the wisdom of Proverbs. Teach them the wisdom of the Bible. Teach them the wisdom of Christ. That means teaching them right from wrong. That means teaching them spiritual truths as well as worldly truths and lies. Teach them a work ethic, saving money, and controlling their tongues, but don't forget God. Don't forget Christ. Teach them where true wisdom comes from. Teach them where true life comes from. Teach them to follow Jesus. And don't just teach your children what to do, but teach them why they must do it. 
Teach him why it is good to follow Christ and have a godly life. Teach them why it's bad to ignore him and his ways. Teach them the Bible. A wise and happy home does these things. Don't hide behind excuses like, that's just not my thing. Make it your thing. Read the Bible to them. Share your testimony with them. Talk to them in the car on the way home from church about church. Take interest in their lives and listen to them. And when they have hard questions, it's okay. Say, I don't know, but let me, let me think about that. And truly think about that and get back with them. We have the church, a body of believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Use them to help you work through these hard questions. Don't just shut your children or your families out. That will teach them not to come to you. Lastly, C, correction. And I know this is hard to talk about, but A, we have example. B, we have instruct them. And C, we have correction, and we must not miss out on correction. The third way to train your children in wisdom is to correct them. You do not punish your children simply for the sake of punishment. It helps them to grow. Just as God instructs us and corrects us, it helps us to grow. Discipline, discipline is about correction, putting them on a right path, Proverbs 29, 15. One pastor once wisely said, we must correct our kids because discipline is an evangelism mission to rescue our kids from hell. Proverbs 23, 13 to 14 says, Don't withhold discipline from a youth. If you punish him with a rod, he will not die. Punish him with a rod and you will rescue his life from Sheol. Kids are sinful at heart, just like we all are, and left to themselves, they will walk to destruction. We all need correction. Now, you need to work through what correction is best for your child, and every child is different. There's many great resources to help you work through that, but I encourage you to pray through it and talk to your spouse about it. Don't make these decisions alone. Make them together. Correction should never be out of anger. Pray. Take a step back. Think through what the best correction is and work with your spouse as a team. Sometimes correction is verbal. Sometimes correction is physical. Sometimes correction is through grace and mercy. And most importantly, correction should always involve talking through the situation with your children and helping them to understand to help them to grow. As we conclude, I'd like to say that the key to a wise and happy home is bringing your family up in the fear and wisdom of the Lord. That involves you, your spouse, your children, all of you. We all have jobs and responsibilities. We need to show each other what it means to follow Christ. Us as parents are not too high or, or important to look down upon our kids and see how they follow Christ. We can learn a lot by their childlike faith. Remember, you will not do everything perfectly, but you serve a God who can make all things new. It's not too late. Start building a happy home today through the wisdom of God. Proverbs 14, 26 says, In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence, and his children will have a refuge. Eugene Peterson once said, The greatest legacy we can leave our kids is how to find refuge in God when everything is on the line. Inevitably, life gets harder than we ever dreamed it would be at those moments of intense anguish. When godly parents bow down and trust Christ, they are teaching their children by a powerful example. They're teaching their children how to draw strengths from God in suffering. And those kids in their, in their day will also find a refuge in God when they suffer, as inevitably they will. My one final takeaway is this, and we close with this. We should be bowing down before our children, showing them where we seek wisdom, where we find wisdom. Pray with our spouses, with our families today, every day. Pray for a house to be built upon wisdom but not worldly wisdom, godly wisdom. May your life be built upon Christ. May you find the redemption in the life that he gives. Let's do this now. Join hands with your family and let's pray.